we're gonna start with the pure mass one the quadratics completing the square uh 12 minutes math is a new series where it's gonna help us in understanding many concepts as i mentioned before and we're gonna work on some concepts and statistics and mechanics later on so let's see the first thing here we have first of all let's know what's the definition of quadratics quadratic is the the function as you see here a quadratic function the function ax squared that's written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c where a b and c are constants and the highest power of x is 2 as you see here uh, the, the quadratic has power to uh, actually have set in the time for 12 minutes and we don't want to increase the time more than 12 minutes to achieve the, the goal or the objective of these videos so we have ax squared plus bx plus c this is the form of the quadratic equation and the highest power is x squared. Uh, the numbers a, b, and c are called coefficients. So a is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x, and c is called constant term or the absolute value. So let's see uh, what do we have else. We're going to work today on the quadratic, the completing square. Uh, as you see here, the form x squared plus bx, this is one of the forms of the completing, uh, completing square or one of the forms of the quadratic functions. And here, how do we do, we do completing the square? So we have x plus b over 2 all squared minus b over 2 squared. This is one of the forms how you change the quadratic by completing the square here. The square for the expressions in, in case a, b, and c. I'm going to take uh, the part of a and then I'm going to take C because we'll not have enough time to complete the rest of the parts. So if you have x squared plus 8x and we need to complete the square for this expression. But there is something very important you need to take care about. Uh, the, the thing which is important is the coefficient of x squared must be 1. It must be positive 1, not 1 exactly. Because if you want to do completing the square, the, the coefficient of x squared must be 1. So in this case, we need to take the common factor first. So let's see the first one in A here. If you have x squared plus 8x here, uh, the value of b is 8. So if you want to apply this here, uh, let's change the color so it will be helpful a lot. So here you can have um, x and then we drop the middle sign. The middle sign is plus here. It doesn't mean always it will be plus. It, it means it depends on the, the middle sign here. So we're going to have plus b is 8. So you're going to do 8 divided by 2. Some students, they can write as 8 over 2 all squared. Or some other students, they can just simplify directly 8 over 2, which is 4. So we have here 8 over 2. And this all squared. So let's simplify. It will be x plus 4 all squared minus 8 over 4 is 2. 2 squared. 8 over 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16, and just leave it in this form. This is completing the square for any, any one of the students is going to say we will expand. What if you expand, you're going to get back again to this form, so it means you have done nothing from the beginning. Okay, so you just leave it in this form. We're going to show you some questions from the past papers, how the question will be, so you can do completing the square. If I move to point C here, uh, it says 2x squared minus 12x. As I mentioned before, we cannot do completing the square without removing or taking hcf first at the beginning. So we must take hcf to make x squared with no coefficient or coefficient positive 1. So 2 is a common factor here. What will be remaining is x squared minus 6x. Now you can do completing the square. So whenever in any case you have a coefficient for x squared is greater than 1 uh, or it's not 1, you must take take it as a common factor. Even if it was negative 1, you must take it as a common factor. So now you can start applying the formula for completing the square. So let's do completing the square and keep the 2 out here. So you're going to have x. The middle sign is negative, And here the middle sign is plus. It does not mean always it will be plus. So you can keep it minus here. You have 6 over 2 all squared minus uh, b is 6 over negative 6. Actually, it's negative 6 over 2. All the squared here. And then close the bracket. It's going to be 2. Open a bracket here. You have x minus 3. All the squared minus. If you calculate this here, negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. Some students will do what? They can expand the 2 here. 
it will be 2 written before the bracket and 2 multiplied by this it will be 2 brackets x minus 3 all squared minus 18 this is correct and this is correct as well but this is preferred to be written here this is the best one so let's move to one uh, more example which is the one that comes in the exams that the time is running very very fast so if we move here to this example we have an um, example here from the past papers. The question says x squared minus 14x plus 1 is equal to x plus b all squared plus q, where p and q are constants. Uh, x plus b, it was x plus b over 2 all squared plus uh, b over 2 all squared. Actually, it was minus, it wasn't plus. Uh, so we need to correct this here. So. Um, this was the rule before. So in this case, what should we do? You can work on this rule. It will be, we're going to add something tiny here. B over 2 all squared minus B over 2 all squared. And then add C. What C? C is the constant or the absolute value you have here. So let's start working on this. So when do you use this one and when do you use this one? This one, like the example before, when you were having two terms only in the expression, but when you have a complete um, expression in the form of any quadratic equation or standard quadratic equation, you work on find, completing the square by using this form. So let's apply here. Make sure first you have nothing or the coefficient of x squared is 1. So the first thing is I'm going to drop here the x. And then the middle sign is minus b over 2, which is 14 over 2 all is squared. And then minus you have 14 over 2 all is squared. Then plus c, which is 1. So now we need to simplify. You have x minus 7 all is squared minus. 14 over 2, which is 7, 7 is squared, which is 49, but you get, just keep it for 7 now. And then here it will be uh, x minus 7 squared minus 49 added to 1, so it will be minus 48 here. And then we have x minus 7 all squared. How do you make sure your answer is correct? Do you reach it to the proper answer? You can uh, do expansion. And then you subtract 48. If you reach it to this one, it means uh, your answer is correct. Okay. So let's see one example that when we are having a coefficient here is greater than one. The the coming sample here. By the way, uh, if you have a, a coefficient is greater than one, you can work on finding completing the square by using this form here. Let's see together. So whenever the coefficient of x squared is greater than one, or it's actually negative coefficient but it's not one so you can work on finding completing the square by using this form so let's see here let's apply this form a is the coefficient of uh, x squared b is the coefficient of b and c is the uh, constant value here so a equals form here we have the value of a, which is uh, we're going to use it from this one a is three b is six and c is one so if i will apply this form uh, let's apply this form. You are right here, 3, then x. Uh, the sign here depends on the middle sign. So you have plus here. b is 6 over 2 multiplied by uh, the value of a. And then you have plus c, which is 1 minus b squared, which is 6 uh, squared over 4 by 3. So let's calculate this. It depends all on calculation. So you have 3. And then you have uh, power 2. I just forgot power 2 here. This is x plus. Here, if you calculate, uh, 2 by 3, which is 6. 6 over 6, which is 1 here. And then plus power 2 is here. Uh, 1 minus um, 6 squared, which is 36. 4 by 3, which is 12. 36 over 12 gives uh, 3. So 1 minus 3, which is uh, negative 2 here. So it's going to be... 3 multiplied by x plus 1 all is squared and then minus 2. This is the final form. If I don't like to use this form or, or I cannot memorize this in the exam, so what should I do? Let's work on another one. Uh, after finding out the value of a, b, and c from the expression, what you will do is the first thing, try to take 3 as a common factor from the expression. So you're going to have 3 as a common factor. So what will be remaining? You're going to have x squared 
plus um, six here. If you have six here divided by three gives you two. So two x plus uh, one divided by three is one over three. And now start working on the old form we have used to find completing the square. What was the form? It was x plus b over two all squared plus minus b over two all squared and then plus c but don't forget the three is out here so we have three and then you have here x plus uh b is two so you can have the new b now which is two so it's be two over two all is squared minus two over two all is squared plus c c is now one over three so let's see now what's gonna happen Keep the three out, start working on this. It will be x plus one all squared minus one squared, which is here. It gives one and then plus one over three. So here, if you subtract, it will be three multiplied by x plus one all squared minus two over three. If you subtract here, uh, this and this, you simplify minus one and plus one third, it gives negative two over three. Now this three will be multiplied here by the bracket and multiplied here. So you can have three multiplied by x plus one all squared minus two. And this is the same thing as what we have done in the first example. So you can do it by this form and you can do it by the, the old form, but you must take three as a common factor, as, because I said before, as I mentioned before, you cannot do completing the square while the, the coefficient is greater than one. This is very important for both of these. Let's see one more example from the past papers, and then uh, I almost will be done with the 12 minutes, or we can take two. Uh, let's see the past paper questions here. Past paper practice, question number one. Uh, the first question says, here, uh, x squared minus 8x plus 29 is equivalent to, as you see here, uh, equivalent to x plus a all squared plus b. The first thing is where a and b are constants, find the value of a and b. We need to find a and b by completing the square. Whenever you see the, the quadratic or the quadratic expression has been written in this form, it means we are completing the square. Hence, or otherwise, show that the roots of this one. And this one, it means you need to solve by using completing the square. So let's work on this example here. Um, this one, we have no coefficient or the coefficient of x squared is 1, so no need to take a common factor. You just go apply the form of completing the square. So we're going to use in part a, uh, here we have x plus b all over 2 over 2 squared minus b over 2 all squared plus c. So the value of b is minus 8, so you have x minus 8 over 2 all the squared minus negative 8 over 2 all the squared add it to c what's the value of c here it's minus 29 some students they're they gonna say here can i just write uh, directly minus 4 and here 16 squared yes it's fine so you can just write here x minus 4 all the squared minus uh negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4 squared which is 16 and here you have minus 29 so you need to simplify it will be x minus 4 all the squared and here minus 16 minus 29 gives you minus uh, 45 uh, which I'm not mistaken in calculation so it's minus 45 so this is the form here so now what's the value of a uh, you need to pay attention on something very important the value of a now a is minus 4 but actually it was here positive so you're going to take the sign of this it will be negative 4 and b is minus 45 so in part a we have done this point in part b hence or otherwise so you need to get benefit from this one show that the roots show that the roots it means you need to solve this equation by completing the square four so what you will do is you're going to take what you got in part a and equate it to zero equate it to zero no one of you says uh, that we need to expand. Expansion will lead you again to the same thing. So what you will do now, you're going to work on solving this. Uh, let's see how we work on solving this one. The first thing is you need to shift the 45 to the other side. 
So you're gonna have x minus four all squared is equal to 45. I think now we have exceeded the time, which is 12 minutes, the purpose of the video, but I'm gonna continue this example to make you, uh, to make sure that I understood the point. So here, um, we're gonna take square root for both sides, square root here for x minus four, and here square root for 45. Take care, it must be positive or negative. Here, uh, the roots and power tool cross out each other. So it's gonna be x minus four is equal to a positive or negative root 45. And then what you do is you shift the four to the other side. So it's gonna be positive or negative root 45. But let's see here, it was mentioned, uh, we need to find it in the form c plus or minus d root five. So if you calculate this on the calculator, it's gonna be uh, root 45, which is three root five. So x will be positive 4, positive or negative 3, root 5, and this is the final answer. Some students can write as 4 plus 3, root 5, or 4 minus 3, root 5, which is correct. Now we have reached it to, I think, 13 minutes, uh, the time, the purpose of the uh, this topic. Um, it's very simple. I wish uh, this video was uh, helpful to you, a short video, a reminder of the pure math one quadratics uh, topic first topic um, of the syllabus it's very easy and wish this video was helpful to you see you in a new video of 12 minutes math the new series bye